This is Dude from Dude Van Guitars. Today I want to share with you what I've learned uh, putting together some cigar box guitars using copper wire as the frets. So far, I've built five of these cigar box guitars with the copper wire frets. So I've learned quite a bit as I've done it. And uh, as I said, I want to share with you what I've learned to maybe make it easier for you to do these if you'd like to try it. Uh, maybe from what I've learned, I can save you from the Cigar Box Guitar School of Hard Knocks. Better off maybe learning before you go than to try to learn everything as you go. All right. So as I said, these this is the um, uh, last two of the five that I've made. First, what I want to explain to you is what I did up at the headstock. Now, up at the headstock, what I want you to see is I used jumbo frets to install what's called a zero fret. So the very first fret right below the nut is called a zero fret. I found the jumbo size fret wire works perfect to establish the action up at the nut area high enough to give you good action over those copper wire frets. All right, and then I also use the nut to make sure that I properly space the strings and to hold the strings in place as I can play the guitar so they're not going to be moving around sliding on that zero fret. Some people will um, use a file to make scores in the jumbo fret to hold the strings in place. Uh, that's going to change your action. I found the action worked perfect leaving the frets as is so I find the nut works well. I used some scrap pieces of Corian to make my own nuts. And uh, I thought they came out pretty good. The next thing I want you to pay attention to is the fact that you're probably going to be limited on the number of frets you're actually going to be able to have using copper wire as your frets. The limitation is going to be caused by the heel. So depending on the amount the heel sticks out of the cigar box and, of course, the size of your cigar box, uh, you want to pay attention to that because you're not going to be able to wrap frets around the heel. You'll have to stop before you get there. So understand that you may be limited or maybe what you can do is you can plan around things based on how you make your neck, the size of the box you use, where you're going to place your saddle, what your scale length is going to be. All of those things will help you to determine how many frets you can have or how many frets you're going to be limited to have. The other thing that I want to point out is that you're probably going to have to accept the fact that you're going to need a little bit higher action on the guitar when you have the copper wire frets. The copper wire frets are not going to be perfect. In order to eliminate buzzing as you're fretting up and down the uh, fretboard and the neck, if you increase the action, you'll get less of that. The very first guitar that I made using the copper wire frets I don't know why, but I got uh, really low action and almost no buzzing at all. And then I was able to use my fret hammer to tap down the copper wire where I was getting the buzzing. And uh, I, I, as I said, I don't know why it worked so well on my first one, uh, but it did. And I was able to get some really low action. But on these other four that I built, I had to go with a higher action in order to prevent that buzzing, as I said. Now, one last thing that I want to point out is I ran into a challenge with this guitar in that I originally put my tailpiece much too low down close to the box where the strings come out of the tail. What that caused was a very steep break angle going back from the saddle to the tail. So what was happening was, now remember, I've got higher action as well. So which is causing then the, the, the steeper brake angle going back, right? The combination of the low tail and the high saddle. So what was happening was, as I was trying to work on the intonation of each one of the strings, uh, manipulating the saddle at an angle, um, I was actually increasing uh, the, uh, uh, the string, the tone of the string, making it sharper. Typically what I've found is when you don't have such a high brake angle, your um, string in, in the open position uh, pretty much stays close to the way you tuned it. As I was trying to slide the saddle back to get intonation, the problem I was having was I was getting my intonation, but then I was also in the open position having a uh, too sharp on the string. 
So I had to lift that saddle, I'm sorry, that tail. So I had to take it apart, raise it up higher, and that seemed to solve the problem. Then I was able to put the guitar back together and uh, get it in tune, including getting the intonation correct. So again, learn as you go. I'm trying to save you some of the heartache of uh, not only maybe not having it come out the way you want the first time, but having to take it apart and figure out what you did and uh, how it's, why it's not working, what you're going to have to do to fix it. So I hope you found that helpful today. If you want to learn more about how I did this, make sure you go to the Dude Van Guitar blog. Um, you can watch my video there about how I actually installed the copper wire frets. That might uh, help complement what you need to know before you give it a try yourself. Hope to talk to you soon. Uh, I'm going to be working on building a couple of electric guitars using Camacho boxes. So pay attention. Again, maybe subscribe to my blog. So when I post information about that, you can check it out. Again, this is Dude from Dude Van Guitars. Hope you're having a great rest of your day.